Hey, welcome to the Protectors. Great guests on today, John and Lauren from Silver Spear Security. Really a, a decent topic to get on today because, you know, with, with everything going on in the world, there is such a need for private security. Not everyone wants to go out and become a policeman, a Fed, or anything else like that. There is a big need for just all types of security. That's why I have these guys on today. Plus, one big topic I want to get into is service members leaving and transitioning into the security world let's do it what's up guys what's up how's it going jason i'm doing good how are you guys doing on good doing great doing great first cup of coffee first cheers cheers, cheers. again love our coffee love our coffee So let's talk about building a security company. Now, how did Silver Spear come into come into fruition? So I I, I graduated North University in two thousand and eight. Uh, the Corps of Cadets. I did Navy ROTC for four years. I never commissioned, uh, but I did the military lifestyle because I just love the um, the training, the mindset, all that. So in two thousand eight, I went to the Secret Service. It's from 2008 to 2014, I was in the Secret Service. In 2012, I met my CEO now, Chris, at uh, when he was doing the personal security for Charlie Sheen right after um, he left uh, that TV show of his, was doing that crazy press run, stuff like that. So ever since 2012, I kind of kept in touch with, hey, if I get kind of burnt out or if this second campaign kind of kicks my ass again, I kind of want to... Um, Jump private. At the time, I was married, and so I went through a divorce, and I, I need to reset my mind, get back to what I love about the security industry. In 2014, um, I kind of joined up with Chris, and we rebranded his old company, Westpac Group, which was formed in the 2000s, um, into Silver Spear Security. And so we basically specialize in private security for celebrities, bands, um, red carpet events, cruises. Anything that involves the private sector of security, I guess, especially this last couple of months of state security uh, with everything going on. So that's kind of how we jumped in. And bands, bro. Shine down. Love yes. shine down, man. How does it, how does it, how do you get into the world of band security and what does it all entail? Um, again, it's one of those things where I hate saying it, but if you know someone, it, it kind of helps. But you also have to have the right training, the right mindset. The job isn't a party. A lot no. of times I think people think it's, oh, well, you would know, be in the government, oh, high-profile details. We're on C-17s flying around the world. We're doing photo ops on the Gaza Strip or the border. It's not like that. A lot of times you're in a hotel room at night waiting for something to happen. You're in a stairwell. You're in a venue that's leaking power outages, you're a biker rally, you're doing all this crazy stuff. It's like you have to learn to appreciate and accept the fact that you're kind of paying what could happen. But, I mean, it's – I'm privileged to work with great people, um, a lot of great artists. Um, I do the security with Nickelback as well. And our companies that I mean from Post Below, Justin Bieber, Motley Crue, System of a Down, Tool. Um, so you name it, we've been there and stuff like that. Now, and that's one thing about security is people don't realize like you have to be on 100% of the time. All it takes is that, that fleeting moment and then boom, you know, your client yeah. or, or anything. And it, it, once your reputation's gone, you're done. That's the only thing you really have. And so like when I try to tell people to want to jump in, um, it's like, man, you might, you might, the show might be over. You might buy the tour buses. <laughs> And then you're like, oh, I'm just going to have a beer. Well, that beer leads to another beer. And all of a sudden, someone breaks backstage and there's an active shooter situation. And then where's the security guy when all hell breaks loose? He's drunk in the back of the bus with the sandals mm -hmm. on, passed out. <laughs> and I think a lot of people need to understand that. You you never really have 
a day off, especially this day and age. You can go to a restaurant right now yep. with your friends or family, and a shooter comes in there. And you don't I mean you're you're never off, and so I think people need to kind of realize that. Yeah, living in Florida, where the highest active shooter incidents occur. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've recently gotten a, a permit to carry, and that's unfortunate, but perhaps necessary because I'd rather be doing something about it than ducking and covering. Jump right into firearms, and it's not even a political thing now. Is the the burden of carrying a firearm is more than what people think. When you have some sort of training or some sort of anything, when you actually may have to employ that firearm, the onus is on you. That's right. And even if it's in your house, even if it's in your house, I mean, I have a little U.S. law shield card. Because it's a fifty thousand dollar retainer, uh, if you need to get, you know, legal assistance, which is up to the officer, responding officer, up to the conditions, yeah, everything down to if it's in your home, your screen door has to be locked, for example, if you have your front door open, little little things. So it is, and you and you know both. You got to know your background. You got to know weapon safety. You've got to have a plan. If there's other people in the house, etc., and then is your weapon secure? You, you know, what are you doing? Are you ready to do that? Yeah, we were talking about the firearms, and you know, it's just it's tough. And now, do your guys and girls carry firearms? I already do not want to disclose that. <laughs> um, depend, depending on the client, the location, yes. Sometimes when you're touring, um, I've kind of realized that, especially when I lived in DC, a lot of times. You have these, you come across people that think they can carry their firearm no matter what state line. Yep. If you don't have the proper licenses and you don't have the right articulation, and I just, if we have, if the people have the right licenses and the right training, I'm okay with it. But it comes down to a insurance thing. The client might not want a gun and we might be in a different location. Mm-hmm. If we're in South America or Juarez or Guadalajara, I'm more apt to work with a state department official or someone on that side that way we deal with their type of i don't know how to say it but we deal with their um yeah trading as opposed to one of our guys getting caught in a sticky situation i'm okay with it but it all goes back to if you're if you're going to pull out your gun or your baton or your mm-hmm. pepper spray you have to be able to articulate why you're doing that and if you're just going to a lot of, I think a lot of these times these shootings that happen and all that, they're just they pull out the gun. They don't have any training. They nope. don't have any wherewithal to um, articulate in their own head why they're doing this. And it, it, like you said, owning a gun is a lot scarier than not owning a gun. And I, I firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're going to protect your domicile, but as soon as you take it outside of your your home and you're carrying it, it's an awesome responsibility, brother. Yes. Yeah, it's it's I I mean I you always see like the uh, whenever there's like an active shooter situation, one of the first times for a police officer gets there is an armed citizen. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like you, you I've, I've always kind of like, man, if I was in that person's position, guy or girl, could I do what they did? Cause they were just yep. enjoying their Sunday or leave a church. And they got to jump into that mindset. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. Now, Lauren, how did you get involved with Silver Spear? Well, I've been doing martial arts for 40 years. I was in the rabbit hole in Hawaii. I was, you know, taking care of things that I needed to. And I just, uh, you know, I've always had that mindset. I'm not as trained as John or you, but in in actual, you know, hand to hand, not necessarily combat, but containment and things like that. I'm a ninth degree black belt in Hapkido and Taekwondo and all of that. it's it's uh, it's very helpful to have that kind of experience, and when you're talking about transitioning, or you're talking about you know working with team members or with uh, individuals, it's just it's really important to train, train, train. I was talking to John the other day about this, and and vet these individuals and get them to you know be able to be a part of, of be a blood vessel, be a part of the stream, be a part of what's going on. So. I'm re- I'm recent. I'm recent. And John's going to open up a training center, uh, I believe, very close to where I am in Florida. So Yes, in Central Florida. One of my favorite words, vetting. 
because yeah. now let's get into you know and that's one thing about if you if you we want really wanted to talk about transitioning service members and a lot of times they have a clearance a lot of times they have a background um, investigation um, you could tell whether or not they were disciplined based on you know if you take a look at their dd214 if they're leaving the service as a pv1 there's probably something going on there right so there's a there's a lot to it and i love the idea of taking service members and transitioning them into a career field now they not, might not necessarily do this the rest of their life but hey you know what it gives them a steady income and they're using the skills they already have no i so my ceo chris Loudon, he is a former decorated marine um and so we've always had a kind of special place for veterans because we do understand that the transition can sometimes be really hard and so I think, I believe a year and a half, two years ago, we kind of started doing research on the skill bridge program uh, through the Navy and Marine Corps. And we started getting filtered applicants of Marines, guys and girls, and Navy people uh, that were slowly re ready to get out of the military life and want to do something private. And so how skill bridge works, they basically... You, you basically talk to the their command, sign a paperwork, say, hey, we're going to bring them into our company, get them trained, get them on some events, get them kind of see if they like this lifestyle. And it kind of expedites their process of leaving the military on great terms. Like this isn't like them getting kicked out. They're finding a new home for them. Like we're taking care of them. And so once they leave the skill bridge, they're free to obviously work with whatever. Uh, we found to grab some amazing people. Uh, from all different backgrounds, from SWOL to gunny sergeants to uh, combat marines, anyone that wants to kind of uh, learn the, the different side of, I guess, security, uh, we're more than welcome to help you get them trained and help you get jobs. Yeah, it's amazing that it's so tough to find a job when you get out of the service. It is. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how many veterans I've talked to that transition and they don't have anything, you know, they're going right on to unemployment. And if they do want to go to college, maybe that degree is not exactly what they want. It's a really cool thing. And you, to go on that, just because you have the, I know Laura and I talked about this the other day. A lot of times we'll get some people that, Oh, I'm gung ho combat. Mm -hmm. like, hoorah. You can't have that mentality in the private sector while we may appreciate your enthusiasm and um, ability to be that guy it also might not be effective depending on the client the location if you're on the gaza strip it's a little bit different than being at the emmys on a red carpet and so yeah. part of our training and helping veterans and law other even law enforcement too that want to jump to the private sector is using your training, but also opening up to how to utilize that training you have into the private sector. And a lot of times it's, it's found to be kind of difficult for some and others, the transition's great. And that's a deceleration, yes. you know, right. you have to decelerate yeah. your, your attitude sometimes. And, you know, and I understand that because you think coming out of the service that if you're going into the security field, that, an employer wants that. They want that gung ho. They want that hoo They want that hoo -rah. But when you're dealing with the public, you can't be like, get on the ground, get away from me. You have yeah, to be like, hey, no, right, know. right. Like this isn't a guy. This isn't a surgeon. That's a guy. That's a press photographer on the red carpet. Like you have to. And you know, I mean, I honestly, I appreciate when you get when you see a marine or a veteran or whoever, you know, they have leadership skills, they have communication skills, they're physical fit. They're mentally strong. And so those are all great qualities. And now it's just using, it's just pulling the best out of those and making them an even better person in the private sector field. You know, when you have decades in martial arts, a lot of time it's the, the presence. Yes. Teaching that presence. Exactly. Teaching the, the, the mindset. It's That's like cool. this warrior mindset that you have to kind of, in, you know, build it up in people. That's right. And I mean, I mean, they have the warrior mindset, you know, in maritime security. I mean, you can still have that tactical, you know, shoot, shoot the Somali pirates. Mm -hmm. if you're, you know, in our society, you've got to understand that. And John said it the other day, he'd rather have somebody with a, with a great heart and who's using this muscle more than anything. So going through training and as you said, the escalation, uh, 
you know, changing their mindset, changing the tooling into, you know, what you need to do to protect someone and put yourself in the line of fire. Mm -hmm. It's not a movie. So, I mean, you've got to have that kind of team ideal and that individual ideal. And as a martial artist, you know, well, I'm sure you both know, you, you have to really have the discipline, but have it in a different um, a way of, of, of you know, work. And, and it is, uh, it's very hard. I mean, look at uh, Save a Warrior, all these guys that are coming out with PTS that are dealing mm -hmm. with all the things that they've seen. And it's a, it affects you, right? I don't know that. that. I'm, I'm the first in three generations not to put it on. My dad's buried at Arlington. My grandfather's in the West LA Veteran Cemetery. I, my mom didn't want me to join because of all the stuff she'd been through with mm -hmm. her, her father. And uh, so that was my warrior training, is, is the martial arts. And Hapkido is really, really phenomenal for, for um, you know, locking somebody up, containing them, and, uh, and, and also just working on that key energy, working on yep. whatever you need to get out. And that's the thing about, about our training, which, you know, John and I will get into it, uh, when it comes time with Chris, is what are we going to work on? How are we going to vet these guys, make them, uh, you know, able to talk, able to get whatever is going on out and not bring it into whatever we're up to. No, definitely, man. You have to, you have to talk to them. You have to, you know, the, the company credo, the mission statement, they know this stuff, yeah. you know, and, and they know how exactly what you're looking for, as long as you let them know. Right. Right. And then you, and then you, tr you prove them, you know, you, you, you put them in situations and scenarios and you, you see how they react before they're actually on, on, a, on a, an assignment. So, yeah. so that's going to be fun to do really. And also yes. part of something bigger than myself. And also having all this knowledge, I don't have a tool, you know, I'm past that. And, um, you know, it's, it's just going to be phenomenal. So I, I really appreciate John and Chris, you know, allowing me to play. John, how does, like, I'm getting out of the service. How do I find out about Silver Spear? Uh if it's if you're military, uh, Marine Corps, or Navy, we actually are going to start really hammering and working with SkillBridge. Uh, we've been lucky to pick and choose kind of people they send our way just through people we know. Uh, but I think there's a good avenue there. We are on all social media, even Twitter, Facebook, which I think are dying breed right now. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Where our biggest thing is if we want the best people, how do we get those best people to look at us and vice versa? And so it's always one of those daily things where, yeah, we have a social media guy that kind of does outreach. Um, LinkedIn's a great tool. I've met yeah. actually a bunch of people through that because very professional uh, with the resume builder and stuff like that. But I mean, it's one of those things where if you know someone, and mm -hmm. every every marine we've hired, they've always brought us. Hey, I got this other guy's leaving. He might want to try this, or he might be good at this, might not be bad at that. He might be great at the state security. I don't know if I'd put him on the road because he has a wife and kids, but I think – so as long as we have that kind of avenue of people, other good workers and security guys speaking up for other people, I think we'll always be set. I mean, we're not looking to hire $2 million. Um, so we're not. We don't want to be CSC. We don't want to be those big conglomerate mm -hmm. um, companies where I, the clients need to know my middle name. They need to know my birthday. I need to know who works for me. I need to do everything about them. I don't want them to be treated as a number. I want yep. them to be a full name. I want to know who they are. And so, hey, if we need support, we have to hire 50 people a week. I, I'm okay with that too. That's great. But it has to be the same procedures and um, hold everyone accountable for that. I like the idea of keeping it simple. Don't overexpand. Just say, so you know, hey, you know what? I can make a million dollars. I'm going to make this yeah, big, huge security conglomerate. It's not worth it. No, it's not because I, man, I here's my thing. If if everyone's gonna, if you want to make a million dollars, if my goal is to make a million dollars next or this year, I'm I don't. There's no rush me to get there. As long as I get there, I'm going to get there. And so a lot of these times when people put their eggs in their basket before they hatch and you're kind of like, mm -hmm. and this, this pandemic, whatever you saw, I, I know four or five companies that start off like heavy, like, Oh, we're doing this, doing that. This thing hits March. 
you guys have no other your tour yeah. industry is gone so mm -hmm. we've we've gone to estates hoas uh, we just picked up a music venue in california and so you have to be able to adapt as well and networking i like how you yeah, always bring up networking you have to you and here's the thing when i'm on the road i come across and so as a tour security director i will advance out say i'm coming to san jose the arena or the amphitheater i've six months out i've already talked to the gm the marketing everyone on social just anything to create we've already talked about i've met security guys to the barricade i've already talked to the backstage supervisor the venue security supervisor maybe even the regional company manager once I get to the site, you're, you're networking, you're talking. If I see a great guy at the barricade or a great guy at the back gate, here's my card, man. Here's my mm -hmm. card, ma'am. I love how you work. You are, I mean, one of the best females I ever pulled out she, where she was backstage at the Arizona Bike Show for a large festival, and you know how those crowds are. Mm -hmm. And, man, she locked that down. I, man, I, I was scared. I could be back there. <laughs> so that, though, you, I always, unfortunately, have to come across really good people that way. And... You always have media there, this press, the, the entire everyone in the crowd. Yeah, they're watching the band, but they're also seeing the actions of the crew and the people that represent that band. And I think that's the best marketing tool for someone in the security industry. If you're good at your job, people will see it. Mm -hmm. They'll respect you for it. Word of mouth. That's how you build businesses as well. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it's 100%. Absolutely. Once we're able to have bands again and be all together, yep. and things like that. I mean, you know, so John is phenomenal at that networking. And, you know, it's begun. And it's so, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a transitional time. And so many bands out there are like, especially like the shine downs and stuff like that. They're very pro veteran. Yeah. So when, when you're hiring veterans and you're saying, Hey, I'm bringing a, a cadre of like really high speed people. They're good people. They're here for the right reasons. They're like, Oh, hell yeah. No, it's, it's great. They're very, those guys, I mean, I don't think I would work with a band. I mean, I'm all for people to have, think wherever you want. Like, I would defend the First Amendment. So I would defend all those members because I would die for the flag. But I also wouldn't put myself, because I'm able, in a situation where I'm not going to go with an artist or a client who's doing a movie or a sh based on uh, anti-American agenda. Yeah. And so working with bands like that, you kind of get to see and appreciate, like, these guys actually care about the flag. They care about the mm -hmm. flag. You know the band Five Finger Death Punch, but they oh, actually yeah. hire. Um, they're good friends, great band, and they they actually hire Marines and stuff mm -hmm. for their crew, from security. They have a great security guy, uh, but their camera crew, some of their techs, some of their back. It's just it's, it's it's cool how a lot of bands and artists kind of take care of the veterans in that aspect. Okay, John, I keep hearing all this about the Marines. We need to hire some Army guys. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm into it too. We actually, I actually have our, um, uh, our PPL manager is the uh, Army, and our uh, training NCO Melvin, who's actually Fish and Wildlife in Florida. He's oh, nice. Army. But uh, we don't talk. We we kind of because the owner is uh, Marine, so he kind of <laughs> you, you kind of get your mouth zipped. And I love it. <laughs> well, gentlemen. And Lauren, hey, where can we find you guys on social media? Uh, Silver Spear Security on Instagram, Silver Spear Security on Facebook, I think Silver Spear Security on Twitter, uh, and then, then we have a website, obviously, www.silverspear.com, and then we're actually updating the website. We're going to be adding all our training stuff on there um, shortly uh, once we kind of build out what we want to do. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we're pretty – you can type us in anywhere – You'll see uh, stuff pop up. Awesome. And I'm just Lauren Avedon, official at IG and all over Facebook. And then I got like four accounts. I'm going to merge into whatever. But it's it's all about uh, this this new paradigm that Silver Spirit like is creating. So it's it's really all about Silver Spirit security. Yeah, it's definitely you got to bring in the subject matter experts, whether that's close quarters combat, close quarters fighting, uh, defense, everything, and and get a really good training program, man, because. What we're finding nowadays is training is key. And I'm sorry, it shouldn't even be nowadays. Training is key. It's, it's so last week when Mel, uh, Lauren and I were talking, one of the things where a lot of people, back in my mind, I'm always like, well, Lauren's a 93 hip keto, like martial arts, but how does that, how does that, like that doesn't do anything for me. 
But well, then as you start thinking about it, you're like, well, no, his 40 years of training, that mental mindset, you pair him up with a one of our other instructors for some classes that can mm-hmm. be John Doors. So, right. so you have that mindset from a uh, that background, martial arts. You talk yep. to Dan Sever, who's going to work with us. Uh, you talk to a combat veteran. You talk to a, a lawyer. You talk to a mm-hmm. former police person. That, or you bring all these different mindsets together. Yep. I don't individually. Oh, you're a UFC fighter. Cool. That doesn't help me. But when you all think together, yep, and put on the same page, that that knowledge and training is immense. So that's why having Lauren is just. He, yes, yep. he's local. But it's just that training, <laughs> knowledge, and appreciation towards learning, and it's 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 I can't even extract how that set is. And it's not it's not going to be close quarters fighting. It's mm-hmm. close quarters containment and yeah. and being you know a part of that that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're creating a failings perhaps, but you're there to protect the principal, the client. And how are you going to approach this? So. Going through all of these great guys and creating sort of a process and staging that process. And then, you know, you will figure out who's who and what's what, who's who in the zoo. But, um, you know, doing that in a methodical way, which is what over years, I mean, you know, what do you, what do you have a, a, a 10 week boot camp or something like mm-hmm. that thrown into, into war or into whatever in, in the army or in the, I see, I said army. I like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, so so how are now you going to transition that into years and years and every day, mm-hmm. every day, tooling yourself for what's going to happen if you're working in this particular operation? Yeah. So. yeah, don't tunnel vision when it comes to training at all. Yeah. And, you know, the more rounded an operator, operative person is, yeah. it's it's you know, it's going to come back in the other end as well as liability. Yeah. So we all love that word liability, especially in yep. the business world. <laughs> yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you coming on today. This was awesome. Thank, oh, you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.